Yes. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. It's me, T-Bone, from the Lund's V Show with T-Bone and Chick Crew. Too many cameras. Too many cameras. This is my focus. This is where I'm staying. I'm in the game right here. And <sighs> sorry for the setback. <coughs> All right, Mr. Taney is with us. That's awesome. Somebody else is also out there. Don't know who that might be. Oh, Mr. LeCaire, Mr. Garriger. This is a great way to start the week. Technically, Sunday is the beginning of the week, for those who have forgotten. It is the supplemental. The supplemental, we're going to do three things. We're going to tell you about your national days of the week. I don't have a community service event. I failed you. I, I was too busy breaking cameras. I'll tell that story instead. And then uh, we finish it off with a little trivia contest at the end. The supplemental is in addition to your normal Lunds V Show. The Lunds V Show with T-Bone and Chick Crew, featured everywhere. Fine podcasts are sold. Moving on to this week in history. No, no, that's not where we start. I broke a camera. I got overexcited. Let me bring it down just a tad. Here we go. With your national days of the week. Starting with tomorrow, your your first work day of the week for most of us. It's national tapioca day. Now, I don't know when's the last time you've had yourself some tapioca. Old tapioca pudding. It's basically just pudding with rice bits in it. But I like to add the cinnamon. Mm -mm. And it's a great gift. It's easy. So today I will stop by my local my local wares and I will pick up some tapioca to give randomly to my co coworkers. Hey, Tegan from Norway. Yes, she is. Uh we will uh we will uh, distribute some tapioca tomorrow on National Tapioca Day. Moving on to the 16th, I chose this one. I think you might know why. It's National Personal Chef Day. Now, you may not have your own personal chef, but you have access to a personal chef. If you live in the greater Rhoda metropolitan area, you can hire her. But if you live in the rest of La Mundo, you can ask her questions, ask her advice. Chick Brew is a no-kidding chef. She's got the paper, okay? So on National Chef Day, be sure to think of our own personal chef, Chick Brew. Moving on, Chick Brew Day. On the 17th, for those of you who do not have a personal chef, it's National Hot Dog Day. That's right, National Hot Dog Day. Now you got your choices of hot dogs out there, but I'm going to tell you, Ladies and gentlemen, I make no mistake about this. I have had the best. I have had the best hot dog on the planet is without, uh, definitely in America. The best hot dog in America is a Thuma. It is the best. There is no doubt. There is no competition. Thuman's hot dogs are so good that if you are in a state of bereavement, because I am a man, I'm not going to send another man flowers. I will send you hot dogs. In a state of bereavement, you know, Sheldon Cooper, he would give you a warm beverage. T-Bone sends you hot dogs because they are being, you can deliver them nationally. And and randomly, I think I'm going to send somebody, <laughs> I'm just going to send a random package of hot dogs to somebody on the 17th National Hot Dog Day. On the 18th, really slim pickings. Nobody wanted to make anything on the 18th of July. And I found out there's a little process that you can go through where we could make the Lunds B Show, the National Lunds B Show Day. We could actually go through that process for a little bit of coinage. So the 18th may be a great option because it really ain't got much there. But speaking of rare, it's National Caviar Day. Yes. And when you eat caviar, you must eat like this. You must. You. Winston, uh, what was, what was, uh, 
Thurston. Thurston Howell. Yes, Thurston Howell. We must all speak like Thurston Howell on the 18th National Caviar Day. You are a liar, Brian. It is not Sabret. Okay? Thuman's got that snap in that quarter pound dog. All natural casings. 100% beef. Don't be bringing that Sabret BS in here. Let me tell you how you know it's not Sabret. Because you can buy some breads and pour water on the streets of New York City. That's a, that, that's an indicator that is not a quality hot dog. If you can buy it in warm water on the streets of New York City, it's not a quality hot dog. Yes, lovely. Yes. Thurston Howell the third. He was the third. Good. Uh, uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Taney, as always. Moving on to Friday. This coming Friday, it's national. National Daiquiri Day. Now, in the previous episode, I failed you because I didn't remember what the contents of a pina colada were or how to make one, and I didn't take the time to look it up. But when it comes to National Daiquiri Day, I need no assistance. Here's what you need. You need rum to your tasting. You need ice, right? And you got a blender. You got a blender, ice, rum. And make life simple, get you the margarita mix, or the daiquiri mix. It's called daiquiri slash margarita. Whatever, just get you the mix, whether it be strawberry or banana or mango, whatever it is, just buy the mix. Because ain't nobody got time, and shouldn't nobody be playing, (laughs) shouldn't, shouldn't nobody be playing with knives when alcohol is involved. Buy the mix, pour it in the blender, put the ice in, put the rum in to your tasting. And, uh, and enjoy National Daiquiri Day, Friday the 19th. I wonder if that's a floating holiday. Did they set it up so that's always going to be the third Friday in July? Because if they did, muy intelligente. Thurston Howell the third and his lovely wife, Lovey. Yes, Lovey. She had an actual name, didn't she? Did she have an actual name other than Mrs. Howell and Lovey? Hmm. I don't know. We're not doing trivia right now. Here we go to the 20th of July. It's National Pennsylvania Day. It always strikes me as odd that the states have a day. But on the 20th of July, you will all recognize Pennsylvania. I'm a, I'm now a proud Pennsylvanian. Well, not so much of yesterday. Ah, not going to get into it. Not going to get into it very Sad day for America, but uh, moving on. Mr. and Mrs. T-Mix. Mm, Mr. and Mrs. T-Mix. You don't know? Oh, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Your, uh, your daiquiri T-Mix. Yeah, Mr. and Mrs. Gotcha. Moving on. Finally, next Saturday. No, that's Saturday. Next Sunday. First of all, when it comes to floating holidays, this should obviously be a floating holiday. Because it involves taking something to work. Now, can you guess of what what is what is? I'll give you a second to answer. This isn't trivia. There's no points being awarded. Points. <laughs> what is the craziest thing you can think of that would no kidding be a national bring your blank to work day? I'll await your response. While, while you're responding, and because there is a, a, a time delay, I'm going to tell you, I, I set up another camera. I, I got multiple cameras set up now. I, I, I'm doing better all the time. Uh, you got this camera high right there. I'm pointing, and then I'm going to switch it over here. Oh, look, now I got that camera that's over there. That's a good one. Remember, I'm just giving you time to answer the questions. I see a <laughs> Roger with Orca. That's very good. I have a guest camera that I set up. And while I was setting it up, yep, I broke it. That's me doing doing the things that I do best. I break things. I I very much uh, battery operated boyfriend. Thank you, Tegan. But we know that that's your every day. <laughs> I see you and James are on the same line of thought there. That's very funny. That would be a good day. We should sponsor National Battery Operated. Being your battery-operated boyfriend to work day. 
No, first of all, it's on a Sunday. Alone ahead, take your. <laughs> uh, it's, uh, it's on a Sunday, so you can't really, unless you're a preacher. Oh, this really makes sense if you're a preacher. It's national, I'm not making it up. Take a monkey, not even your. A, take a monkey to work day. Um, on principle, I shall not be participating in this particular day of observance. Take your ex. <laughs> Only if it's a shooting range. Uh, good morning, mother. Or as I like to say, mother, tell your children not to walk my way. Again, I did fail you. I did not get a community service event to do. I can tell you that uh, you ain't got nothing to do tonight. The doors open at 6. Show starts at 7. That's going to be uh, 1000 Hannah Street in uh, Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, where the, the comedy team, the local comedy team of, let's see if I can get this all from memory, uh, Lennon Free, he's going to be there. He's alphabetically first. Andrew Glessner, alphabetically second. Casey Nicholson, third. And Damian Robinson will be serving up the laughs tonight at Savannah's. Uh, it only costs $10 to get in. And uh, again, you know, so th this is 1000 Hannah Street. It's an annex, an ante room, a glitter free environment, if you will. It's the uh, champagne room of champagne rooms. And that's where they're going to be doing it. And paying 10 bucks to get into the comedy show to see four awesome comedians from the local area. And that ticket will also get you into where the polls uh, are, are being waxed, the wax poll. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a poll waxer. <laughs> So I didn't have a community ser service note for you, but I kind of did. Uh, I went and got some chicken yesterday from Manola Fire Company number three, right there on East Penn and Workville. Let's see. Where is Casey? It's over there. The, the wife was especially excited about the baked potato. She uh, was definitely excited about the baked potato. There's so much excitement. Anyway. All right. Uh, chick brew. Yes. Uh, I'm getting warmed up for our conversation a little bit. Uh, she is still at work. Harambe is there. She throws out the high, no sex in the champagne room, says someone, and looks out the Harambe. Okay, all right. <laughs> it's now time. Oh, no. Did I lose it? Let me turn this thing off of here. Bear with me, please. I had this. I had this all set up and ready to go. Ready to go. And it's back. Yes, 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 yes. Here we go. All right. Now, man, please. What's going on with the window there? I don't know. Oh, because shoot. All right, no worries, no worries. Watch this. A -boop -a -boop -ba -boo. That's gone over there. And then this is back over here. And, and I know you can see the comments, but it's helpful for me to be able to see the comments. Here we go with this week in history. Trivia! <laughs> Sorry, it's strange for me, but whatever. I, uh, I got a, another green shirt in, and I had to find a, a makeup shirt. My makeup shirt strangled me. Not not true. Not not true. All right. Champagne room isn't it till tonight. Here we go. Question number one out of seven. There are only seven questions. We will all do our best to answer them together. Question number one: Who led the Spanish conquest of the Aztec Empire? and defeated a numerically superior Aztec force in the Battle of Utumba in Mexico? That is a really wordy question. Uh, I don't know if we needed numerically superior Aztec force. It's just what Spanish conquistador beat down the Aztec Empire is the question. Now, Tegan is already using her multiple choice answer of C, when in doubt, Charlie out. I can tell you C's not right. Taney with Cortez, spelled with a Z, he goes. 
no accent over the E, Mr. Taney? Is it, for those of you waiting for your multiple choice option, who, why is the AC on? And I got to turn my microphone down when I have to yell at you. So you don't hear the drone. Uh, your options are, of course, Hernan Cortez, Francisco Pizarro, Ferdinand Magellan, or I have to say it right, Cristo Colombo. Uh, Christopher Columbo. So your options are the one, the two. <laughs> oh, okay. That's good to know that you can't hear the AC. I can hear it. I don't want you to hear it. Those are your options. Cortez, Pizarro, Magellan, or Columbus. I got a Cortez. I got a Cortez. <laughs> uh, Robert is going with Pizarro. And, you know, uh, we are uploading these now, the, the supplementals. We are now uploading those to uh, the podcast page. Roger goes with Cortez. So I have to be a little bit more mindful of uh, the fact that we can see things that they can only listen to and uh, do a better job of telling them what's going on in the chat. She changes her answer to Columbus, a uh, blackjack, no trade back. Uh, and look, people, make a decision. <laughs> this is our Rupert again. Uh, Christina with the funny. Uh, make a decision and stick with it. You're not allowed to change answers, Taney. Tegan. Uh, the answer for all of you. That, oh, I don't know. I don't know. I'm guessing along with you. Uh, I am going with uh, Herman Cortez. I, I believe it was Cortez. Because Cortez is uh, the most famous conquistador on the list. And Francisco Pizarro, I believe, was an Italian. Not really known for their Spanish conquistadores. Question number two on July 8th. What significant event occurred in the Gulf of St. Lawrence, New Brunswick, involving the first known exchange between Europeans and natives? What significant event occurred in the Gulf of St. Lawrence, New Brunswick, involving the first known exchange between Europeans and those daggone savages? or natives, or whatever the term is we're supposed to use now. I didn't hear the answer so yet, so I can't. No, you can't. Those are the rules. I said so. No points. <laughs> All right, again, uh, Europeans, Native Americans, something happened on uh, July 8th, no idea what year, in the Gulf of St. Lawrence. Any ideas out there what it could be? The Battle of the Beagle. I see where you're going with this, Chick Roo. It's uh, pretty much going to be all uh, beetle jokes. Hilarious. <laughs> Here are your multiple choice answers. Was it the arrival of the Mayflower? Uh, no. No. Be because the way the question is worded, we already know that is not an option. I just improved your chances of getting this correct. European colonization of the Americas. Again. You know, I teach people how to take tests, and both of these answers have taken themselves out. The hardest part about writing a multiple-choice test is coming up with three legitimate uh, bad answers. Both of these are bad answers. So we have the arrival of the Mayflower, the founding of Jamestown, a European colonization of the Americas, or the signing of the Treaty of Tordesillas. I believe, you don't have to leave the fat beagle. <laughs> uh, Brian goes with Thanksgiving as a possible answer. That was before I gave out the options. First attempts at a Northwest Passage was not one of the options. The signing of the Treaty of Torcidias, the arrival of the Mayflower, the founding of Jamestown, or European colonization of the Americas are your options. James goes with Treaty. T-Bone, he's going with Treaty. Roger goes with Treaty. Robert goes with colonization of the Americas. Tegan, also colonization of Americas. And uh, that has been question number two. Question number three, which Franciscan friar? <laughs> I, haven't, I haven't even looked at the multiple choice options yet, okay? But if you hear Franciscan friar, <laughs> he's not fatty. Yeah, it's, uh, I've never seen a fat skeleton. Uh, my, my phone is being weird. Okay, all right, okay, D. Uh, 
European colonization. Whenever I think of a Franciscan friar, I think of St. Francis of Assisi. I have to. It always comes to mind. I don't know if that's one of the options that we're about to be provided, but he is my answer. <laughs> Which Franciscan friar found the Mission San Antonio de Padua in modern-day California? Mission San Antonio de Padua in modern-day California. What Franciscan monk was it? Roger goes with Monk Tuck. <laughs> He's not, that is not correct. Is it uh, Juniper Sarah, Bartolome de la Casa, Juan de Anote, or Fernando de Sota? Those are your options that you get to choose from. A, Juniper Sarah, B, Bartolomeu de la Casa, C, Juan de Anote, and D, Fernando de Sota. I got a juniper. I got Friar Tuck, Friar Tuck, still funny. Tegan's going with answer A, Juniper. Robert is, is pretty much sticking with D all day. Robert gets the D. <laughs> He's going with Soto. Taney, Mr. James Taney's going with Bartolome de la Casas. And Roger's sticking with Friar Tuck. I agree. Uh, T-Bone's choice on this one, Fernando de Soto. That's, that's my guess. I'm, I'm pretty confident on that one. Out of all of those names, that's the one I recognize the most. Bartholomew de <laughs> Number four on July the 10th, what river did Alexander Mackenzie hope would take him to the Pacific, but it turned out to flow into the Arctic Ocean? Talk about a mistake. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what's going on. The Casas guy was Brian's guess on the previous question. Keep track of your own answers. I can't keep track of them for you. And I need a comment because uh, right now we're looking at viewers versus comments, and it's a number I don't like. So here's my comment. With question mark, explanation. Uh, there's a new comment. <laughs> uh, la, 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 la. What river did Alexander McKenzie hope would take him to the Pacific but turned out to take him into the Arctic Ocean? Alexander McKenzie, don't really know the name. I'm assuming Canadian. Choices are the Mississippi. The Columbia, the Mackenzie, how cool would that be? <laughs> how cool would it be that you're on the river named for yourself and it took you to a place you didn't want to go? Hmm? How cool would that be? And finally, the St. Lawrence. So we know where the St. Lawrence dumps out into, the Gulf of St. Lawrence, which, by the way, is right up there near New Brunswick, not the Arctic Ocean. The Mississippi. It doesn't go through Canada. Uh, the Columbia definitely could reach up there. I, as strange as this sounds, I think I know my answer. All right, uh, uh, <laughs> looking at your comments real quick. Mm, I got to scroll up. I, all right, there's mine. Roger goes with the wrong river. I, I agree, that's funny. And, yeah, if, they're, if the joke's funny, give them a laugh, folks. <coughs> Brian goes with the Klondike. Tegan, she goes with the Mississippi. A for A. Robert was uh, Robert goes with the Mississippi. Maybe he named it. See, that's Jeremy Hines pine, uh, opining. Taney with the Mississippi. The <laughs> chick brew with the Great River Hound Dog. T-Bone's guess on this one, as strange as this sounds, I believe the river that took him to the wrong place is named after him, and I think it's the McKenzie River. Because that's things Canadians do. Question number five. We'll find out all your answers in just two more questions. On which date did the French Revolution begin with the storming of the Bastille prison in Paris? Uh, here's a clue. Camera's over there. Here's a clue. If you know what day Bastille Day is, you know the answer to the question. I know what day Bastille Day is. Do you? All right, the Great River Hound Dog, Mackenzie, I am changing. Uh, too late now. We already moved on. You can't change. What date did the French Revolution begin with the storming of the Bastille prison in Paris? Thursday. <laughs> the one you are thinking of. Excellent answer, Jack. Excellent answer. Uh, of course, these, 
is narrowed down because this week in history is the week between the 7th and the 14th. You got seven options to choose from there. Oh, stop it. I'm answering these. I'm getting them right. Tegan is complaining. For our podcast listeners, Tegan is complaining that one day we may get questions real people may know. Just because you don't know it doesn't mean real people don't know it. Was it, here are your four options. Brian goes with the third. That's wrong. Was it the 11th, the 12th, the 13th, or the 14th of July? So we got it down to seven days. It's a day that ends in day. Very funny. But now I got you down to four days. You got a 25% chance of getting it right. The 11th, the 12th, the 13th, or 14th. Everybody should chime in with an answer. It should be very easy. January 15th is National Beagle Day. Oh, you're killing me. You're killing me. Brian with the 14th. Taney with the 13th. Roger with the 14th. Jeremy with the 14th. And Tegan says 14th and lets us know that's today. Robert with the 14th because he's number four. Brian with 14. Everybody went with 14. We are in agreement. And the rest of you that didn't, well, get you guys. Uh, question number six. Did uh, uh, I'm changing my answer. Everybody else has changed their answer. I'm changing my answer. <laughs> I'm going to go with July the 11th. Uh, I, only because I think I told everyone the answer at the very beginning. So here's one for you. On July the 12th. What standardized text of Latin mass was introduced by Pope Pius V in 1570 and remained unchanged for 400 years? Standardized text of the Latin mass introduced by Pope Pius V in 1570 and stayed that way until 1970. <laughs> Deacon is complaining that I changed the rules. You'll get over it. Your uh, multiple choice options out there, for those of you who are not uh, uh, down with the, the Catholics. Uh, option A, the Roman Missal. B, a book of common prayer. <laughs> Jeremy wants to know where I'm getting these questions. C, the Tridentin Mass. Or D, the Liturgy of the Hours. Which could it possibly be? It was standardized in 1570 by Pope Pius V, and it stayed that way for 400 years until 1970. But, I mean, if you weren't around in 1970, you probably wouldn't know this either, right? All right, uh, Rupert the Missile, that's funny. She's killing me today. The Unchained Melody, that's funny. Uh, B for the book, liturgy for the hours. Uh, I still, you know, I'm giving everybody an opportunity to an answer. I don't see anyone guessing the answer that I'm guessing. Howling the song of my people. In case you don't know, she had beetles and they howl. And that is the song of her people. Uh, T-Bone's answer, okay, Brian with the missile. T-Bone is also going with the Roman missile as the standardized mass for 400 years. And then they changed it when I came around. <laughs> Finally, on July the 13th, what U.S. president opened the expedition of the industry of all nations, a world fair, at the Crystal Palace in New York City in 1853. What U.S. president opened the World's Fair at the Crystal Palace in New York City in 1853? An, e an even easier way. You just take out a bunch of the words. U.S. president, World's Fair, 1853. Who was it? You know your presidents. You know the answer. This one's not a hard one. <laughs> it's 1853. And option A is Abraham Lincoln. 
Oh, all right, I got some guesses. Trump, funny. Uh, Dwight D. Eisenhower in 1853, Robert. I know why you chose Dwight D. Eisenhower. I know why. Harding, uh, another Trump. Very funny. Everybody's everybody's got jokes this morning, <laughs> and I'm okay with that. <laughs> I'll come back and smiley face you later. Uh, President Rupert, funny. She's killing me. And uh, and Tegan is going with uh, uh, John F. Kennedy Lincoln, which I think is, is a, a funny choice. <laughs> Here are your options. Lincoln, Andrew Johnson, Franklin Pierce, or James Buchanan. What is, I'll take three presidents that no one can remember for 600. Lincoln was not around in 1853. Or was it? I'm getting my dates screwed up. Was it Abraham Lincoln? Was it Andrew Johnson? Was it Franklin Pierce? Or was it James Buchanan? All right, going back over to the chat. Let's see. Uh, I got uh, Abraham Lincoln. What was the mixture of uh, Adolf Hitler and Abraham Lincoln on Rick and Morty? <laughs> uh, Bernie Sanders. That's funny. You know, I was saying just kidding, Lincoln. Yeah, I know, but I thought JFK Lincoln was funnier. You're welcome. Robert, with a serious answer, he's choosing Buchanan. Johnson, he's a part of yourself, says Mr. Taney. Google said Biden is what Brian has to offer. <laughs> final chance. Final chance. Yeah, you got a laughy face. Who's giving out all those laughy faces? All right, that's Robert there and Robert and Tegan there. Good job. Good job helping uh, this thing go along. T-Bone's answer. I believe. Bill Clinton, I see it. Uh, I, I believe it was Franklin Pierce, and uh, that's probably the only thing he did during his entire presidency. Turn on the lights. Early Biden years, he was about 72 back then. Funny chick roof, Bill Clinton. I got the question, Pierce. I do New York part. Okay, all right. Now it's time to find out. Buchanan is from Pennsylvania. The house is in Chambersburg. I'm telling you, Mr. Taney knows everything. He's a smart man, and I enjoy having him in my life because he teaches me things I didn't know, like Buchanan's from Pennsylvania, and his house is down near the Park Casino in Chambersburg. <laughs> Here we go with your answers for the seven questions that you just went over. We, we, we just went over. Uh, who was the Spanish court conquistador that conquered the Aztec Empire? If you answered a Hernan Cortes, Correct. I chose Hernan Cortez. One for one. Number two, significant event took place with the Indians and the Europeans at the Gulf of St. Lawrence, New Brunswick. What was it? Son of a gun. Uh, they listed it as the European colonization of the Americas. So, uh, Robert, I think you're one of the few people who chose D there. Uh, I retarded it as a legit defense. Clan Eastwood, I do my part. Buchanan's from. All right, we're all caught up. Robert's complaining the game is rigged, even though he just got an answer correct that I don't think anyone else got. So, uh, question number two. Uh, one for two. It's my score. Just keep it my score out loud. Question number three. What Franciscan friar founded the Mission de San Antonio de Pueda in modern-day California? Uh, those of you who chose Juniper Serra, congratulations. I did not. <laughs> I am not doing good this week. One for three. <laughs> <laughs> Good job for those of you that got that right. I see Tegan uh, patting herself on the back. Question number four, Alexander McKenzie he wanted to go to the Pacific. He ended up in the Arctic. What was the name of the river? It was the McKenzie River. The question I have, the, the thing that makes me laugh, was it the McKenzie before or after he found out he screwed up? I think that's funny. If you answered along with me on that one, you would be correct. Two for four. Question number five. What date did... Uh, <laughs> Son of a... Don't change your answer. You don't change your... Every one of you that changed your answer changed it to the wrong answer, including me. Because I knew what day Bestial Day was, but the way this is worded, I'm going to read it word for word, okay? 
a question in parentheses, July 11th, colon. On which date did the French Revolution begin with the storming of the Bastille prison in Paris? 714. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. It is the 14th. It is the 14th day of July. I know this. But because it said question, July 11th in parentheses, I changed my answer to July 11th. And I'm wrong. Wrong. It was the 14th. Son of a beagle. That's a good one. I like that. Trump lives in Florida. <laughs> Just random trivia for Brian. Thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, Jeez. Two for five. Question number six. What standardized tech? I don't know what that noise is. Oh, there may be a hot naked person standing above me. I'm right underneath her shower. And uh, uh, maybe you hear it, maybe you don't. Anyway, question number six. Standardized text of the Latin Mass introduced by Pope Pius V and stayed that way for 400 years. What was it? It's the Roman Missal. And if you're not Catholic, you no points taken off of that. You should be fine. Yes, you should always follow your own rules, and especially when there's three E's and C's. And finamente, question number seven, July 13th, 1853, who opened up the World's Fair? If you chose Franklin Pierce, you are correct. Good job, everybody. This has been a fun way to start off your Sunday morning. It's the supplemental. We do it every week at 1030. Uh, in just an hour, two hours from now, I'll be recording a new episode with uh, Chick Roo of the Lund's Bee Show. You can find that anywhere fine podcasts are sold. Be sure to look us up on the Facebooks and become a member of the uh, the crew there. Join us on our fan page by searching the hashtag L-U-N-S-B. Thanks for uh, being a part of today's uh, thing about Babadoo. It's a thing about Babadoo. Yes, that was the last one. I don't know why she's looking for more. All right, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I remind you today as I remind you every day to be the best person that you could be. And if you are a great person today, be an even better person tomorrow.